you're going to hear from the next president of the United States right here from this stage during this CPAC. There are lots of terrific candidates. 2016 looks like it's going to be a crowded race. Twenty sixteen is an opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, just like nineteen eighty was. In nineteen eighty, it took one election and one president to return America's standing and to defeat evil in the world. The only thing standing between us and savages, it's the red, white, and blue. It's the United States military. In America, we will stand up for what is right and stand against what is wrong. That's what we need in America. Ladies and gentlemen, now is the time to declare without apology and without equivocation that this is the greatest nation the world has ever known. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome President and CEO of the Washington Times, Larry Beasley. Thank you so much. Thank you, Matt, Dan, Millie, and the entire CPAC team. What a conference. The Washington Times is so proud to be part of what went on here, and I know our 14 million readers have really watched and paid close attention. All the news that was made here this week is very valuable. In many ways, CPAC emphasis on learning and activism was palatable in every corner of this great complex for the last few days. And I'm confident that we'll all be leaving here better trained, better informed, and more inspired to go back home and fight to change our country's direction. Now, before we do, we've got some important winners to announce. These winners have the chance to shape the future, one in my profession of journalism and the other on the road to winning the White House in 2016. And I think we'd all agree in this room that we'd like to see both of these, those paths shaped in the right way. So first, I get to announce the name of the young journalist who won the Washington Times Idol competition this year. That's the contest that many of you came to see on this main stage yesterday afternoon, where 10 aspiring young reporters from the National Journalism Center tested their skills by interviewing Congressman Steve King of, Ohio of Iowa, yeah, and former Congressman and pre pre presidential candidate Dennis Kucinich. They both did a fantastic job, and I applaud you as well. We saw some great reporting occur on stage, thanks to all of these great young journalists. But our panel of esteemed judges, led by our own chief political correspondent, Ralph Hallow, unanimously agreed that the one contestant that stood out for his probing, persistent, fast-moving interrogation of Congressman Kucinich that's right, and I'm so proud to announce that Nate Madden, who just graduated from the Citadel Military College in South Carolina, <laughs> Nate, Nate is this year's Washington Times Idol winner. In his bio, Nate said that, he, that his dream was to be a correspondent for a major newspaper, and we're going to help make that happen. Nate, you'll be receiving a paid internship this summer from the Washington Times. There you will get to show off your great interviewing skills again and have the chance to crack our front page. So Nate, congratulations and welcome aboard at the Washington Times. Now, 
what everyone has been waiting for. The winner of the second competition has a I'm sorry. Oh, Nate, I didn't know you were in the building. Thank you, man. Welcome to Jonathan. Thank you very much. Can I say a quick thank you? Is that right? Just say thanks. Yeah, just a very quick. I just want to thank everyone who made this possible. Thank you so much. Way to go. Thank you. Good job. I apologize, Nate. I didn't know you were in the audience, but thankfully you were. Now the winner of the second competition has a chance to send the liberals into retirement and return the White House to conservative leadership in 2016. To this, a conservative like me makes a big difference. And it sounds great, doesn't it? Whether you're from the South or not, like I am, as most of you know that have been here the last few years. The CPAC Washington Times Presidential Straw Poll is one of the most respected barometers of the conservative movement. And that's because it reflects your views, your values, your perceptions of which 2016 candidate is the best equipped to win ne the next year election. And thanks to the great work that Kellyanne Conway's firm does, it also has an uncanny knack of predicting who is rising into the top echelons of conservative power. So without further ado, let me bring Matt and Kellyanne to the lectern to explain what you told us and who won that straw poll. Thank you. Hi, CPAC. What a great week it's been. Larry Beasley in the Washington Times, John Solomon, thank you very much for inviting my firm, The Polling Company, to conduct this year's straw poll. I'm very happy to report to you that we had over 3,000 respondents, a sample size of 3,007 to be exact. That's a 20% increase in participation over last year's straw poll. And I want to thank you for participating. Some people like to say the straw poll doesn't matter, why are we doing it? I'm here to tell you we do it because we believe you matter. At CPAC, your voice is heard and your opinions count. I'd also like to give a special thanks to Kevin Quinley and Nate Lance, part of our polling team in this effort. Yes. So before we get to the winners of the presidential straw poll, we'd like to review with you some of the demographics from the poll. And in keeping with the, the spirit and the content of the 2015 CPAC, we'd like to show you your responses to the substantive issues questions. All three legs of the conservative stool were represented here at CPAC and in the straw poll. And also, we want these presidential aspirants to pay very close attention to what you say you expect on substantive issues. These are really hot off the press. This just came in. Next slide, please. The methodology, anybody who was a registrant was able to uh, participate in the poll. You had a five-digit PIN code. You can participate it on the CPAC, through the CPAC app, or also at the kiosk, the straw poll kiosks. And I saw they were five across and six deep most of the, uh, most of the week. As I mentioned, 3,007 participants. So we had 42% uh, who were individuals, 42% uh, who were students, 45% individuals. Hard time reading that, actually. And, uh, and you can see some associated with organizations. But once again, we had a great participation by students from all across the country. <laughs> Next slide. Woo! Love them. As proven in the next slide, ladies and gentlemen, where a plurality are between the ages of 18 to 25. <laughs> uh, if you could just go back a second, I'm sorry. Thank you. I just wanted to show you that this is incredible because all we hear is how disenchanted and disconnected from the system, from the political and policy system young people are, and to the extent they are involved, they're mostly liberals. Thank you for turning that on its head here at CPAC. Next slide. We asked which of the following four clusters of issues are most important to you, and you do see that foreign policy, national security, 
rose in prominence this year. Three out of ten voters said that would be most important to them in deciding their Republican presidential nominee. Social issues like education, health care, moral issues like abortion and marriage in, in single digits, and of course jobs and the economy six years into this uh, chronic economic downturn. We see 52% saying that that is the most important set of issues. Next. Getting a little bit more granular into the issues. What should we do about Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act? 83% of you agree with some of the remarks that have been said here at CPAC. Repeal Obamacare. Very little appetite for fixes. Next, please. On the legal immigration, you see a smattering of responses as to what the best solution is in this uh, conundrum, this very complex issue. But you'll see 37% illegal immigrants should return home to their country of origin. 27% origin, they should be encouraged to return home and apply for U.S. citizenship, get in line. 18% they should be allowed to stay here and apply for citizenship. And 11% stay here and not be allowed to apply for citizenship. A diversity of viewpoint on illegal immigration. Of course, 77% of you, 60% strongly agreed that Congress should use its spending power to defund uh, President Obama's executive amnesty on illegal immigration. That's a pretty unequivocal message to the powers that be. Next. Continue with the issue slides. So we asked which of the following is the best argument for having a, a, a larger free market energy policy, which is different than the all above energy policy you hear about so often. And you see a smattering of responses there, but many people saying that they see the energy, energy development in this, in this country tied to more job creation and economic development. It also helps develop more of the energy that we have off on our shores and under our feet, lessens our dependence on foreign oil, and to a lesser extent reduces prices. Yes. On foreign policy and national security, a three-way question asking about selective disengagement from foreign affairs, from world affairs, that received 12% of the vote. 16 of you said it continued strong interventionist policy. And 7 in 10 of you said peace through strength, meaning build a strong military, <laughs> use it where. Next. Should the National Security Agency collect phone data of U.S. citizens, quote, for the purpose of preventing terrorist attacks and tracking those? And you see that there's still a majority opposition, almost two and three of you opposing that. With close to a third of you saying it's permissible for this uh, narrowly prescribed purpose. Next. You can certainly applaud, but please keep the way you might celebrate the results of this slide to yourselves. <laughs> you're not in D.C., you're in Maryland. <laughs> Four in ten of you think that marijuana should be legalized and for recreational and medical use and taxed. Some of you offered that it should not be taxed, but of course, as you know, tobacco and alcohol and similar things are taxed. So to be fair, that's part of the question. Another, sure, another quarter of you say it should be legalized, but only for medical purposes. And 27% 27 of you agree with the law as it stands, at least in most states and federally, it should remain illegal. Next, it is, that's right. We asked two different abortion questions. This is the most fascinating slide to me outside of the presidential straw poll results. 74% of you call yourselves pro-life. Eighteen percent pro-choice. But ladies and gentlemen, look at the diversity of viewpoint. When we ask the six-point scale, you find an incredible diversity of viewpoint that you simply don't find on the left. Can anyone in this audience name for me five prominent pro-life Democratic women in this country? Go. Four? Three, two, one? 
exactly. Look at the diversity of viewpoint in, in this particular question. 20% should be prohibited under all circumstances, 18% legal but only, say, only to save the life of the mother, and 30% the plurality response in cases of rape, incest, or to save the life of the mother. Next. Now we get into presidential politics. First, we wanted to know what's on your wish list. What do you expect these ladies and gentlemen to say or to possess? The most important attribute by far is that they already have a solid conservative record. <laughs> Four in 10 of you say, where have you been there? Have you been engaged? What, what have you said and done? <clears throat> 17% want the candidate to appeal to independent voters. And then you've got pretty much a, a tie between strong communication skills, the ability to win states in the Electoral College, which is different than electability, which is a fiction, that President Obama won, and of course, uh, previous executive experience. Moving on, what are your deal breakers? Under, what, under no circumstances would you vote for a Republican presidential candidate who thought or did each of the following. The biggest ones were expand Medicaid under Obamacare. You said that's a deal breaker. Followed very closely by supporting Common Core and supporting immigration policies. That's right. And supporting immigration reform that includes amnesty. Followed very closely by foreign policy that disengages from world conflict and being pro-choice. Uh, last on the list was supporting gay marriage as a deal breaker at just 18 percent. Next. Unless it's the presidential ballot, then don't tell me. On Common Core, we asked, I would never vote for a Republican nominee that supports Common Core. That's 58 percent. And a third of you say, I might vote for a Republican nominee who supports Common Core if I support them on their other positions, and I would assume and if they run against Hillary Clinton. Before Matt and I announce the winners of this, the winner of this year's CPAC straw poll, I wanted to review with you what the criteria were for being included on the presidential ballot. I think this is very important for all of us to know. Last year, there were 25 people on the straw poll that we did not conduct. This year, there were 17. How did they get there? They had to satisfy one or two of these criteria in a big way. And of course, we discussed it internally. Are they hiring staff, raising money beyond their normal operations, including in early states? Are they telling donors, supporters, media, key people, that they are seriously considering a presidential run? And finally, are they accepting invitations to purely presidential forums, which is not necessarily CPAC? And so before you show the results, I would like to tell you, we'll start with the fifth place winner this year. How's that? Yes, shall I? I think, hold on. Are they gonna give me back to the... Here you go. Okay. Okay, you go ahead. Right here. Yeah. What do I say? Okay, the chairman says yes, I can do that. <laughs> yeah, you go. We're not going to show the slide. I'm going to read to you. In fifth place, former governor of Florida. I think. <laughs> go, go. Jeb Bush. From here, we're going to go to the poll. Go. Do fourth? Do fourth? No, no, do fifth, and then let's I go to the fifth. front. Let's go to the front. Come okay. on. At 8%, Governor Jeb Bush at 8%, number five. All right, we got more to come. I can't catch you. You all came out in a snowstorm on Thursday, and I want you to know that we, we, we ran out of tickets on Thursday. It was fabulous. And uh, the last three days of CPAC 2015, you got to hear from the next President of the United States. Uh, young leaders like you represent the future of conservatism. And I would also love to thank our CPAC staff. Come on out, guys. There, there we go. Sorry, they weren't prompting me on the telephone. No.
right start on five again and go. Oh. <laughs> okay, ready? Go back to yeah. Former Florida Governor Jeb Bush at eight percent. In fourth place. In fourth place. Pediatric neurosurgeon Ben Carson. <laughs> Dr. Carson received eleven percent of your vote this year. In third place, current U.S. Senator. Ted Cruz. Now that means we have a runner-up and a winner. And this year they were separated by five points. Very close, close this year for the CPAC straw poll. Very close. And actually, ladies and gentlemen, as you'll see in a moment, when we take your first choice and your second choice combined, they're separated by two points. So I think the CPAC straw poll is, represents how fluid and open the race is. So the two winners, Matt's going to tell you the actual winner. I'm going to tell you the first runner-up and the winner in whatever order. The two top vote-getters this year were Senator Rand Paul and Governor Scott Walker. All right, can we get a drum roll? Come on. How about the audience? Can I get a drum roll show from you? And then show the slide. They show us the slide. slide. The winner of the CPAC 2015 presidential straw poll is Ram Paul. Wasn't CPAC awesome? Wait, we want to show the next one. Huh? I'm going to show the second choice. One more slide. Slide. You can tell them second choice and combo. You can talk. <laughs> okay, we have one more slide. We're almost done. We have, well, here we go. There's the slide. Wasn't CPAC 2015 awesome? Did you have a great time? Are you going to sign up for CPAC 2016? Will you be active in your community? Will you be active on your campuses? Will you be active in the conservative principles every single day? We represent you. This is your CPAC. This is your vision. Conservative action starts here. <laughs> we had one camera. What happened with the conservative?